Okay, so we're going to leave the title screen up for a bit to see if we can get this cutscene that I missed that has some important, uh, I guess, content and context about what's going on in the story. I'll do that while I'm updating everything else while the stream goes with me here. No problem, DK. Thanks for sharing it. Really cool game. Hey, thanks for the host, Ethan. What have you been up to? Have you been streaming that name? We'll leave it on this screen. I think it takes a while for it to display. Cool, what'd you click? One of the heavier Sakamoto themes. Oh man, I've heard really good things about uh, Shadow Mortar. It kind of is fast and loose with the Tolkien that Lord of the Rings canon, right? And the setting is still super cool. I think this is the cutscene we missed last time. Go ahead and start the clock running on this one. Interesting, you don't get these that often anymore, like a cutscene that you have to stay idle on the title screen to see, especially one that's this important to the story. Six hours have passed since the occupation of the Duke's Manor by one Sidney Lostero. Founder of the Mullen Camp, he and his allies have taken the Duke's family and servants hostage. Hold the manor as we speak. Well, there's the main character, so maybe we'll have some clue as to what he's up to. To what purpose? Let's go make two demands. The release of their imprisoned comrades and the abdication of Cardinal Batista. Religious freedom within limits is protected. What pretext shall we apprehend them? This game looks so good. This is probably the best looking PlayStation 1 game. We need no pretext. Mullen Camp is a pack of robes hiding behind a priest's frock. We have been responsible for the attempt on our sovereign's life. This yule type passed. Like, I don't think a PS1 game could possibly look better, short of not going for 3D graphics, right? And trying to do like the Symphony of the Night thing. And the agents gave their lives because of this religious freedom. Freedom too many gods. This Kordak drum moves new light you. Parliament cowers. Strike that outburst from the record. Okay, there is someone keeping minutes, apparently. Cult's not the Templar's concern? Why must we be involved? Triple ellipsis. Inquisitors have found that Camp's coin comes from the captive duke himself. Lendia might still be at war with itself, were it not for the Duke's heroism, but he wields much of his power from the shadows. After his retirement, his grip on Parliament is unrelenting. Wow, yeah, just like cinematography in this game, the actual character models look really good, the style of the text. Let's find out why the Cardinal sent his blade to deal with this incident without our approval. I have a feeling that the story in this game is pretty convoluted in the same way that everything in Evil East is. Not convoluted, which is very political and maybe hard to follow on your first playthrough. So one of my agents ahead, it's the one we met, will find you when you arrive. But we left her outside and she got captured by the one asshole, I think. Duke Bardorba's Manor. This game's not only it isn't Evilies, but it's also written by the main like story dude behind Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics, right? I forget his name. I don't know if he's worked on too much since those games. Agent Riot? Ashley Riot. 
Holy cow, how was your journey? Uh, Ashley Riot's it's too cool for school. But he has a reason to be grimdark. <laughs> There's like a trailer. Oh, I think I know the one you're talking about in Tactics, he 10 Duke's family is sure he's 3 4. Duke does not take the captain. Nay. How fair the blades. So it is see. Direct action is perilous. I wish it was Sydney will be collected information to aid her final. Dude, like the lighting in this game too. Look at that. That's insane for the PlayStation 1. Siege has begun. Harden's blades have made them move. Direct defiance of our authority. Perhaps their hand was forced. Where are you going? It's provided the perfect distraction. It's far too dangerous. Let's wait for reinforcements. Reinforcements! I am the reinforcements. It's a pretty cool line, man. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> cool, I'm glad we watched that. Thanks to folks who po pointed it out. Um, to the viewer on YouTube who mentioned it as well. But probably wouldn't have remembered if it wasn't for the YouTube comments. Thank you. For watching this in the future. It's back to circle being confirmed. X is cancel. Good to know. Here we go. So it begins. Oops. I'll have to swap this, right? Because this is still X is confirmed and circle is cancel and ring here. Uh, I think it might be this one. Maybe this one. Virtual memory cards, man. There we go. Oh, this game just looks so clean. I love the font. I love having like the save count, the clear count, the percentage completion. I kind of wish I had played this when I was younger because I probably would have played it over and over and over. This is exactly the sort of game that I would have liked to play and repeat. Did a lot of Brave Fencer Musashi, which was also a PS1 um, Square game. All right, so in the last session, I learned a new ability, right? I find it. I have temper. We probably have to find an enemy for me to, for me to try. And we're able to have both uh, chain abilities and defensive abilities. We're not picking between both of them. That's right. Or reflect damage. I think I learned all these abilities and never got into a combat to try them, so... I'll try to look around and see what we can find. Is that what this guy's supposed to be? Can change three defense. How do I trigger them? Is there a button I should be pressing? Okay, here we go. Chain. Oh, this is just resetting them though when I'm in this menu. Time combo press. Oh, that's interesting. So it's kind of like a uh, time to tax system. Cool. I didn't know that. That's really awesome. Alright. I get the hang of it. Fast. Slow. Cool. Gotcha. Alright. What a fun way to add to like what's basically turn-based combat. Now, 
the same thing happens. The defense abilities are just like Super Mario RPG, where you just press the button at the right time when there's an exclamation point over your head when you're being attacked by an enemy. I'm guessing you kind of get a handle on the timing for different weapons. I'm sure it's different for each weapon. That's pretty sweet. Okay, yeah, I was trying to understand earlier what y'all meant by you can have both attack and defense at the same time, but that makes me makes way more sense. Too fast. Too slow. But it gives that feedback. Fast. And risk is a way to keep you from like spamming attacks too fast as it builds, it increases your it decreases your accuracy, right? Acquire accumulate more risk, I see. I really love the risk system. Such a cool way to do something that's like pseudo turn based. You have to alternate. Sure. Can you do 200 super jumps in a row? I have done that before. It's very satisfying when you ex execute on it. And risk just decays over time. It looks like that's the case. Keep thinking to press it right as I see him fire the bolt, but it's actually a split second afterward. Take me a while to get a hang for it. It's really cool though. Very exciting. Um, I forget, do I get XP for fighting random enemies like that? Is there a reason to fight everything? I've got a heal skill now, which is nice. There we go. Too fast, bummer. Well timed. Now, does the text it displays there, is that actually relevant? Like, well timed versus excellent? Or does it just have a variety of things it can say if you landed it right? I could climb up on that, maybe not. Now, did someone say that there's a reason to not have your weapon out all the time? Oh, here we go. Well, it's part of it. You can't climb shit with it out. Um, but it, like, drains durability the whole time it's equipped or something. That's right. Ouch. Panic. Just a little too fast that time, I think. Oh man, yeah. I'm excited to get good at this system. I think it's going to be a muscle memory thing, though. It'll be hard to do via um, sub-block exclusively, right? So I'll lose what muscle memory I've developed. Keep on using the right stick to rotate the camera. There we go. Durability goes down the whole time your weapon's out. Okay. So you have an incentive to put it away. Fast. Gotta quit though. It's interesting, it's a cool way to keep you from spamming buttons too. I didn't really think about this at first, but if you're trying to spam for the next time you're able to press the attack button, you'll inevitably get it too fast when the enemy swings at you. That's cool. Risk won't decrease, HP MP won't region. Fast again, man. Slow. I think I came in here before, but made them block last time. Fast. 
There we go. For once. I like that it's a heal too, that's nice. See you game saucer, nice seeing you. Oh, man. I think I really just gotta wait for the uh the indicator. Right on. <laughs> Your combo ends once the enemy is out of health, so you won't get the beneficial effect if the first attack you did was enough to kill them, presumably. The door has been unlocked. That appears to be the case. Uh, gotcha. So there's some elements of strategy, then, of when you try to get the combos in. You probably always want to practice it just so that you get the um, muscle memory. And there's a door hidden back here. No, I can't. Right. Way I came in. Maybe there is one. There's a way to pull this shit, right? I can't use it to attack this stuff. Oh, there's the door. I'm just blind, aren't I? Oh no, that's also a box. <laughs> shit. There's a way to push some crates around, isn't there? I think that there's a door behind this, but maybe I'm just seeing things and it's just like a place where there's some crates and shit that's not relevant. What causes enemies to respawn? Just like after moving away from their screen too far? Or moving a certain number of screens away from where they were originally? Pushable liftable crates look obvious. You know. Who would do I love timed attacks. I think that's part of why I like Mother 3 so much, because it has this like rhythm timed attack sequence that's Really, really robust and satisfying to do. Is there fall damage in this game? I don't think so, right? He makes like a grunting noise when he falls, but I assume he's not actually taking damage when that happens. A gust trap, gross. Fall damage. It's a little bit later than what my intuition tells me it should be. I think, like, Mario RPG timing to press it, like, as the shot comes out, but it's slightly afterwards. It's more like when the damage number displays. Now, does your risk go up during a combat or in a, during a chain only if you succeed, or every time you attempt a chain, it makes the risk increase? There's a dog on that thing. That's cool. <laughs> Good. Probably could have done a second chain there. It's interesting that you don't get the benefits if the first attack is enough to kill them. Like, it still tells you that you successfully executed the chain, but doesn't give you anything special. I think that's probably the correct way to do that. Sure. So, the containers in this game are like ender chests. If I put something in this chest, it'll be in every other chest we see for the rest of the game. Is that correct?
they have anything in here at all. Gotcha, cool. Is it necessary to start storing anything in chests this early? It seems like the inventory limit's fairly forgiving. Or at what point that actually starts to matter more. Try to go in this way. Ah, that was the door that was previously locked. Isn't that cool little, like, Star Wars wipe there as you walked into this room? This game does that a lot. You won't make that for long? Okay, very good. Drupal ellipsis. Stop the pain. That looks like a soul. Dark metamorphosis. Oh, fantastic. Some magic or merely the power of Leomonde? Well timed. That is so satisfying. Okay, I got the defense wrong, but everything else felt really good. Awesome. Too fast! Nice. Wee! Alright, getting a better feel for it. Rapier. Get all. I could try that. Uh, let's see it though. How does the whole equipment system work in this game? I don't actually remember. Equip. 7th heaven. Now, do I progressively get better with different kinds of weapons, I guess? Is that what those little bars mean? That, like, the physical is getting better on the right because I'm using it more? Or is that just showing its stats relative to other items or something? Weapons level up the more you use them. That's cool. Um, so, here's another question. Is there going to be like, you know, a rapier plus two? Maybe it has a different name, which is a strictly better version of the rapier? Or are these all just different, like, play styles? Like, could I stick with an early weapon and just level it up for a really long time until it gets really, really good? Or is, am I always going to find one that's strictly better? Obvious box is up. Use your crossbow on beasts. It's better against beasts and worse against other things. That's really neat. Wow. Okay. Gotcha. So then you kind of have to switch. Can you switch weapons on the fly in combat? I haven't had a reason to try it before. This too part of your game, Sydney? I wonder if I can attack them with impunity with this thing. Too fast. Oh, that's cool. Different targets. Oh, it's too bad, man. That would benefit if they ever made a Vagrant Story 2. Think about how much that would benefit from iteration. Keep it in fast. It's too bad. So it's not necessarily that, like. Ooh, shit. That was bad. Some weapons are always good against undead. Like, the weapon will get better at undead if you keep using it against undead. 
probably want to use the rapier against these guys mm. because I've been using the um, crossbow mostly on beast enemies. Let's try this. Oh, that's cool. And do the are the disassembled parts better if you've leveled up that weapon to some extent? If that makes any sense. Not a lot of damage. Too fast on the second one, though. If you miss. Ha! Huh. The second swing is on. It's got a different uh, timing. It's cool. Do you repair items in this game? Not really. Slow. Oh, and you can still chain even if you miss. I guess that's an important factor that I didn't notice earlier. Because the timing's different on the second swing, I cannot not screw it up. It's funny. Uh, I love it. This game's system is fantastic. It's one of the best I've seen in a game like this. Chain ability repairs weapons. That's cool. Hmm. All right. <laughs> I can't get the intuition for it. It's super funny. I love it. Crafting system. I feel like it's hard to do an exciting crafting system, you know? Crafting systems are often annoying. This is a really good opportunity for me to practice this weapon. Cannot get the second swing. It's like timing a roll against the Dark Souls boss and you really think it has to go at a certain time. Except I'm not dying and having to run back every time I screw it up, so that's nice. What do the, um, the dialogue boxes that come off of enemies mean? Does exclamation point mean that they notice you and they're coming after you? Or is that like the, the periods? The ellipsis, I mean? <laughs> Just wait. Okay, the last one's even longer. That's interesting. <laughs> Probably switch back to the crossbow just because I have a reasonable chance of killing him with that. In the extra I won't have to wait for an attack. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Attack what I need to do now. Slow that time. Now, is your weapon getting better every single time you swing in an enemy with it? Like, was it improving against Undead, for example, there, every time I uh, was swinging at him, even when I was missing? Because I feel like, regardless of whether I was landing the chain attack, I was doing more damage with each attack attempt. Which is kind of like the, you know, we need to have a um, an RPG that attempts what Final Fantasy II was trying to do for the NES and failed. This might be the game, if I'm understanding it correctly. Reaches foe's MP, regenerates Ashley's MP. Add numbness to an attack, add poison to an attack. What does numbness do? Does that slow them down or make them unable to attack? They might actually want the poison on them. Oh, that's... Mm. Gain magic sounds good, too. Put 
Poison's more interesting. I would like to. I'll get gain magic next time, assuming I can pick from those again. It's reclaimed from suppressed memory. Cool. Okay, so I do battle abilities, chain abilities. Pairs a small amount of weapon DP. Gotcha. This is the one that's just straight up damage, it looks like. DP makes it hit harder. I see. So the first time you get a weapon, it's kind of sucky. Suckier, at least. Shit. <laughs> Uh, one of these days. I probably should have waited for the risk to deplete before I fought this guy. I'll probably still put my weapon away and climb up and do that. Okay, and that's a much faster... Wow, so is there a unique chain animation for every weapon type in the game? Like, there's gotta be, like, the poison attack for the crossbow, the poison attack for the rapier. Unless if certain weapons, like swords and rapiers, share animations or something. I can see that being the case also. Much faster. Let's try doing it in that order, though. Not that fast. Three animations per weapon. Gotcha. So each chain art could fall into one of those three animations. Gotcha. That's the one that's longer. Fast at the end though. Getting better at it. <laughs> so those two animations are the same, I see. DP is durability, PP is what fills up as you use it. Okay, thank you. PP hype. You said the timing window gets more and more precise the longer it... Um, so this is like Super Jump and Super Mario RPG. You could potentially go forever if you were good enough, but your risk would get very high by the end of it, right? Too fast. Too furious. That was awesome. Alright. Now I feel like I'm better practiced, better prepared to deal with enemies in the future. How much of this game is like trying to use the environment to cheese a little bit? It's totally cool if that's a main focus. <laughs> this probably depends on the enemy too. It's right? interesting. First person view pauses the game. Alright, so we want to switch back to the... I see the PP meter. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Okay. It's too bad that that's so slow. It'd be nice if there was at least a couple hot switch buttons. Gotcha. All right. Let me uh, let me start thinking about healing here. It's a quick way to access my spells. Because I just have to go into the menu and pick it. Right? Do spells get better you the more you use them? Like um, Secret of Mana. Really.
I haven't saved in the beginning of this session. I hope I don't die. <laughs> so I haven't seen the save point. It's a problem. Hello. Spells don't improve with use. That's good to know. So, double steam. Double hand. Ha 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 ha, alright. Cool. Ooh, that was bad. Maybe don't do that next time. Abdomen. Let's go for leg shots. So what is the HP 0, 82%? Like, is that trying to tell me how much damage I have to do to affect them in that part of their body, maybe? Drain heart. I was about to say drain magic spells must be something you can completely not avoid, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Oh, that's a damage prediction. Thank you. So the trick with this guy is shoot him in the abdomen mostly. fairly safely as long as it doesn't do enough damage to me that I can't pull one off in the same round. So I gotta wait for MP to come back, so it would have been good to take the MP region. Oh well. Fast, ouch. Is there anything other than MP to blocks you from using spells, like can I just sit here and heal indefinitely as long as I'm full on MP? Doesn't like cost risk or something? Oh, interesting. Okay. So I use the defense skill. I'll put that up here in a second so I can understand what just happened a little bit better. Uh, battle abilities, defense abilities, prevents paralysis and numbness, reflects damage, reduces physical damage to 50%. So I used impact guard, but it was a magic attack, so it did nothing. So I should be using reflect damage, because that's the only thing that matters against this guy. Yeah, I haven't been near his save point. Working on it. Thank you. <laughs> I like the way that refunds some of the health, that's cool. This is where MP region would have been fantastic. probably have some items I can use to heal in a pinch. But I'll know I'll take that as the very next chain ability I can learn. <laughs> can I like run away from him for a long time to try to get my risk to deplete? Is that strategy? Shit. Shit. Oh I'm dead, aren't I? Got a spam heal here. Yeah. Okay. 
Anyway. This is troublesome. Black damage is actually fairly decent if the enemy hits you really hard. I like this action game component to it. Like, it definitely feels like a turn-based RPG most of the time, but like when you're trying to deplete risk. Risk also makes your accuracy suck, doesn't it? zonked out there. <laughs> so cool. I really, really dig it. Uh, I should add this to my wishlist document. People to add to the winning spreadsheet. Or I might just put it on there myself when um, one of my slots opens up again. with the score? <laughs> what earns you that? Normal agent. Okay, very good. We got a shitty bonus last time, right? Okay, that seems like a good bonus. Probably don't want MP since there's all sorts of ways to regenerate MP. Adds a few points of HP, a few points of MP. So are these two items like permanent stat increases? Let's get that gain magic, why not? That seems pretty important. I'll look at the defensive abilities later. Yeah, just the design space in this game is too cool. Really excited to explore it more. Rusty nail, alarm. Must be equipped on a weapon. Oh, it's like a gem that you socket into it. Okay. That's neat. Let's see if I can figure this out here. Though its setup does then, presumably. I might try the spear for a while. Can I move things in and out of sockets? Ah, okay. So these ones can't even accept gems in the first place. This is meant to teach you about this. Three parts. Touching gem isn't permanent. Good to know. Thank you. Oh, and you could name your weapons. Ah, oh, that would be fun for uh, for a queue. I might set that up for the next stream for Vagrant Story. Right on. That's pretty rad. Pretty neat. Man, we're at the save points game. <laughs> it's been 40 minutes. Hey, there we go. Hooray. Where can I see the item limit? Okay, here we go. Four total weapons, eight total weapons I can carry. 16 blades, 16 rips. I see, interesting. Gotcha. <laughs> See you, bro. This please.
I'll try to come back to this save point in 17 minutes. Remember it. Keep in mind if I have to backtrack to return to it. Yeah, no, I think I'll do a queue for weapon names next time we play this. I see why this is Galactic Kodiak's favorite game. It's really cool from both a story and a mechanics perspective. Too fast, huh? to your dog, it looks like. Is blue the best possible status in that little uh, paper doll of um, Ashley in the corner there? That one's got a longer spin up, it looks like. There's the move 50% debuff from hitting in the legs, that's cool. First time I've actually seen the benefit of doing that, it's interesting. So body shots generally are less damage but higher accuracy, headshots tend to be more damage, less accuracy. That makes sense. Too fast. Fire breath. That's okay, I pressed the wrong button anyway. Yeah, I love the way that punishes you for spamming buttons. That's such a cool... It, it, the system works on multiple levels, right? Body locations are random in terms of accuracy and damage. But you really, it's kind of getting you to search each enemy to decide what uh, body part to use. Maybe that's kind of a flavor thing. Is there a way for me to detect traps? Do I have that capability? Something I should be wary of. Use those consumable that he's got. Increase paralysis, lowers risk by 25 points. Interesting. Do I have to use it to learn it? Is that how that works? I should have been using to generate on that last boss. I forgot. It looks like that's a really good ability to keep up all the time. I'll remember that next time for the next boss. L1, L2. Oh, I see. I don't have to go all the way into the menu. Gotcha. Thank you. Same for accessing my consumable items. I see. So I saw these two, which just let you change what you have equipped. And I assumed it was the same for the other ones. But that makes sense. Thank you. Dick. 
Why you get that? Be so rude. Right on. <laughs> that follow up is harder to land. Very nice. Love his little, like, Irish. Step dancing jump. Use your arms for that, buddy. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take me sessions to get over. Like, I keep trying to spam circle to attack again, and when I do that, I get the too fast error. Having to unlearn an entire playstyle, it's great. Curious. Alright, so for funsies, let's try casting this grimoire on this guy. That was a pretty cool animation. You get it by Master Joe already. I see what you mean about like this guy's arm takes just as much damage as his head. Door is rusted and won't budge. I think an earthquake to open this. Q earthquake, please. Oh, there are multiple exits from this room. Multiple exits from this room then too. So what the little gray dot means exits. see some boxes in this room if I can get them. Remember how this works though. I have to break some of them I think. I couldn't really see the red dot moving earlier, so I wasn't entirely clear. Yay, only one was necessary. I didn't know that there were, like, secrets, kind of, in this game. Maybe not so much secrets, but ways of hiding exits from a room. That's cool. Follow up, like you have a lot of trouble hitting much later than what it's going to be. Good enough. So there are no exits from this room other than the one I just found, but it doesn't show you. Uh... I'm going to 
this guy over here. Or over here, who lets us? I see. Can I not grab it from here? Can I not like set it on this thing here? Okay, I see. I also can't like pick it up from down below, right? Oh, there we go. It just wasn't letting me do it before. It's been pressing the wrong spot. Awesome, what do we got here? Holy shit. Why is there so much loot in here? Pink squirrel, cross guard, Pyrrhus, Long Boots, Locus, or Iocus, excuse me, Lazerade. This is power against undead. I'm fighting undead right now. The spear, my undead weapon. Let's equip all that shit. How do the grips work? It's just like this is the thing you're using. It's a set. Which is, hmm. I'll look at it in a sec. It's a way to modify lots of different pieces of gear, I guess. Well, this is blunt. Blunt's usually better against undead. It'd be in a workshop to change grips. Okay, thank you. It's good to know. I wonder why it's called a pink squirrel. Interesting name. Grip and blade determines what kind of weapon it is. That's a really cool system. Wow. I like that. So this thing has gotten better at taking hits from beasts. This one is strictly better. And its defense strength is physical defense to strength defense intelligence is magic defense, presumably. This game is just way too cool. I can't believe it's only 23 hours. It's one of those games like Transistor that's just really uh, robust, you know? Ah, because with this thing I can really shield at the same time. Really robust despite being a fairly short game, I meant to say. Attached gems. That's the only one that can take gems at all. Interesting. Well, then in that case, I'll switch back to. Yeah, Transistor's even more of that, right? That's probably the most extreme example I've ever seen of a game that has a like really, really complicated and. Uh, interesting depth-filled combat system that is so short that it really doesn't justify having as much as it does. I mean, it's probably good that Transistor and Bastion are short. Kind of meant to be short games. I didn't want that game to be 30 hours long, but kind of too bad they put all that effort into it for such a small amount of time. After this, we'll loop back to the save point and switch to the last game for today. So the time limit. Time limit to defeat the spooky ghost that just spawned. Shandy Gaff, great sword. Queens, HP, and knuckles. Only I may do that. I pressed it too soon. Bummer. Although that just decreases strength. Strength is what's compared when doing damage, though. It like not only affects your damage, but also affects your armor or your damage resistance, which is why that's really good. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. And my style of play would probably lend itself to 
taking longer to... Oh, I didn't realize I could target different body parts with magic as well. Let's see. That wasn't great. Too slow. Ninety-eight percent, yes, please. Can't be poisoned by MBS. Defeated ghost. Oh, neat. Ooh, extra point of strength. This, yes, please. All right, we're gonna head back to the save point, and then we're on our last game for tonight, which is Lost Odyssey. Take a few minutes to switch the capture card over to the Xbox. You no. Know. A uh, load-bearing ghost, right? We need to have an earthquake to open this door. for a second that it was going to close the door to the save room, right? Right on. That slimes, that's cool. This game is probably aged better than almost any PS1 game that's not just like a turn-based RPG or a 2D side-scroller, right? 2D. No. Excuse y'all, I gotta go save. Alright. I feel like the first hour I didn't really get a sense of what this game was all about because I feel like the chain attacks are really important and it was too bad that I had just gotten them uh, before I stopped. But now I get it. <laughs> I was like, oh, that game's kind of cool. It looks really nice. And now that I've played it for real, I'm like, this game is freaking awesome. I'll play more of it. All right, we'll be back in uh, in a little bit with Lost Odyssey, folks. <laughs>